Hey guys, how are we doing today? Welcome back to the Chaos Vibration. This is Damian James, and this is the next episode in the Modern Mythos Magic slash Pop Culture Magic mini series on this channel, where we discuss how to potentially carry out magic or spiritualism, or in this case, divination or tarot using pop culture. So as we all know with the tarot, it's really more about finding the deck that really speaks to you as opposed to that which is prescribed or that which is deems the best. It's about finding the symbolism within the cards that really speak to us at a soul level, not as much about what the prescribed meanings say because those are very, very, very dynamic. Now, one thing I have found is that when we try anything with magic, tarot, whatever, it's obviously all foreign to us, right? And one of the overarching themes of the Modern Mythos Magic miniseries here is I think it's about getting in touch with deities, thought forms, whatever, or just symbology in this case that really speaks to your mind or your soul. It just really resonates with you. And what I found is that you can carry out cardomancy, do divination using regular cards character cards from your favorite video game, movie series, your favorite comic book, whatever. These could be sports cards, these could be Yu-Gi-Oh cards, those games like Magic the Gathering, even though I didn't play those growing up, Pokemon. And the reason is, or while well, there's multiple reasons rather, that these things I find actually speak to us for a couple different reasons. One of those reasons is we always say with magic, spirituality, etc., and yes, it is true that it's not enough to understand something at a conceptual level. And without putting it down, what we often forget is that when we look at the occult books, we look at the meanings of what a tarot card says, that is concept. That is intellectuality. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that research or that study. This isn't about not learning the traditions, this is about deepening your practice. But one thing with the Modern Mythos Magic miniseries is that I find it's very plausible to suggest that these Modern Mythos Magic deities, as I prefer to call them, could be our modern demigods, or they can be the things that speak to us, and we're more apt to understand the symbology because we've played the games, we've watched the movies, we've invested a lot of time and energy into them, and we can relate to them, and that's a great thing to have in your tarot card practice, no? Now, in no way do you have to go out and buy a million cards. Personally, what I'm gonna be sharing today are just some cards I had lying around as a kid that I found really served me. I will use these in myriads of different fashions, sometimes to uncover my own unconscious motives, sometimes to bring clarity to a deck such as the Rider Wade Smith, which I really, really, really do like working with too, to bring even more clarity to the picture, get further insight, pretty much use these things as oracle cards. We're not gonna be doing a reading, I'm just gonna be sharing a couple examples from universes I work with, and as always, invite people to see through what I'm saying, and find their own ways to incorporate this into their own lives and practices if they are interested. So I've been in a big Lord of the Rings mood this, this year. So let me share a couple Lord of the Rings cards I have that I got from collector's boxes, so on and so forth growing up, that I will use in workings and share some of the things that really stand out to me. Let's take a look at these Legolas and Gimli cards. First off, we have the characters themselves, right? So. Let's say you did a spread or these two came out, you were wondering what happened. They came out next to each other. What could this mean at an esoteric level? Well, let's consider, and a good exercise for this, is to just throw on that movie once again and reflect on the journeys, the relationships, the outcomes of the characters. Legolas and Gimli, to me, could mean a respective partnership, an unlikely one. It could be in romance, business, a creative aspiration, so on and so forth. Anyone who's seen those movies, read those books, obviously knows the elves and the dwarves are not frequent to get along, see eye to eye, work together, but in the case of Lord of the Rings, they become the best of friends. But there's even more with these cards that I like, and if you notice, you get a row of numbers going down the side. So in the case of either of these cards, we get the following numbers. Two, six, three, which obviously equals the number 11. 
if these two came out side by side, you get to 11.11, you could take that as a sign your, that some partnership could be manifested. Once again, you can pull a couple out or do your, your, an entire spread with these. That choice is yours. Another thing I like to do with these cards, if you look at the upper right hand corner, there's this little glyph here that you could consider a sigil for the character. So if you wanted to try and evoke that character, summon that character, whatever, you could absolutely meditate upon that symbol. I generally find that is more effective than trying to project an image in a path working or a meditation or anything along those lines. Let's take a quick look at the uh, Gandalf card here. To me, when I see that card in my life, that generally speaks to something magical. Maybe there's a magical working I should do, or if I feel I'm at a magical problem or unsure how to proceed, I may ask myself, how would Gandalf handle this? You could even meditate upon those cards, those sigils, and at least for me, I will wait, maybe vibrate the character's respective name, the deity's respective name, until I start hearing their voice inside my head and will journal what they have prescribed to me and then contemplate upon it further. Lots of different possibilities and it doesn't have to be that universe. It doesn't have to end there. Just for example's sake, here are a couple um, cards I have from some Legend of Zelda collector's boxes I had growing up. And these really speak to possible outcomes for me. And once again, um, I'll look at the games and consider what happened to those characters or the kind of functions they serve in their respective universe. So let's say you want to do a magical working and you pulled out the Ganon card. Anyone who's played those games knows that Ganon could pretty much be somebody who is lusting for result or power all the time. No, he is the bearer of the Triforce of Power. He also transformed into a beast, so you could say that means you're lusting for result. That could be akin to the Devil card, so on and so forth. Now there's also the character Zelda in those games, right? Let's take a look at this card. To me, this one's a little bit more symbolic, deeper, and interesting. It can mean a lot of different things. First off, let's take a look at how Zelda's dressed. She's dressed royally she has this dress on she has a crown on so on and so forth that can mean abundance that could mean um some kind of divine feminine energy it could be a relationship it always depends on your context but beyond that the colors in these cards really speak to me when i look at this card i always notice those blue gems around the crown this could mean speak your truth this could mean proceed with wisdom this could mean think very carefully about what you're about to do. Zelda does have wisdom. She also gets ahead of herself in some of those games. I'm not going to go too deep into the lore, but in the Ocarina of Time, she gets this crazy idea, right? And yes, it works out, but it doesn't work out the exact way she intended. So you could say, well, yes, this will work out long term, but there may be some turbulence in between. Let's take a look at the Link card. For me, the green tunic always speaks of the heart chakra. That makes a lot of sense with courage too. It means go within, channel your courage, and take that inspired action. Follow your passion if you're unsure about it. That could be an angle. It could mean if you're looking at a problem, just like Link would at a dungeon, don't look at everything at a surface level. Really slow down, take a look at what's going on, try and find the hidden solution that's probably right under your nose, just like in those dungeons if you ever got lost in one. Now, in a lot of these decks, they won't just have characters, they'll have events, so on and so forth from the game. So let's just take a quick look at this card. What are some things it could mean? Lifting Link's Curse, it could mean that if you're going through a dark time again, a curse will be lifted, or maybe if you're going through some stagnation, there's some inner shadow work, some inner healing you need to do. The wolf could be a symbol of a spirit guide. It is once again, relative to what's going on in your life, what these things say to you, not what I say they mean. There really is no right or wrong way. My only tips if you're interested is find what works for you. Make a, a um, elemental deck using your favorite Pokemon, so on and so forth. You could use sports cards, baseball cards, whatever, and look at the numbers on the player's jersey, look at those stats. Was the guy's batting average 333? Will that pop up, pop, pop up on the back? Will those angel numbers say something to you? It all depends. Maybe one day long term and drop a comment if you're interested. This channel will be 
or would like to feature pick a card readings using something like this. Maybe something like we put a stack of cards out, I put a lightsaber on one deck, maybe a little ring from Lord of the Rings on the other, maybe a little Master Sword from the Zelda series. We will see, but that is something that I'm going to be experimenting with this year, as long as some other spreads I've been doing. But drop a comment, let me know what you think. I think this is a lot of fun, by the way. I think it's a great way to get in touch with yourself. It's a great way to deepen your Modern Mythos Magic practice. If you want to work with a Modern Mythos Magic deity, if you, could, if you have any cards or anything like that, you can even find a couple cheaply on eBay or whatever. It is a great way to do so. You can also use the cards to petition spirits to your will, just like somebody would with a product like the 40 Servants deck. We could go on forever, but it's very clear to see how this is useful if it resonates with you. And I know there's a lot of Star Wars people out there. This is probably going to be one of the most controversial things I've ever said. I'm not a big, big Star Wars guy. I think it's cool. It just doesn't really resonate with me. There's those decks out there to build a deck for that. You can have a lot of fun with that. Um, but that does conclude this video. The possibilities are endless. It's very easy to see how this could be useful for you if this does resonate with you. But for now, let me know what you think. Drop a comment. Give this a like. Give this a share. Subscribe if you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you on the next video. For now, take care, everybody. Eudaimonia.